Okay, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, so this is a joint work with uh, Ervin Dervisevic and uh, Lisa Perova from the World Bank. And uh, in this paper, we uh, look, uh, as Kunal was uh, introducing, uh, we look at the relationship between maternal employment and uh, child development outcomes, so child health and child education. Um, we uh, focus on a developing country context, in particular the, uh, the countries uh, Indonesia, where we look uh, over the period that goes from 1997 to 2014. And uh, as I said, we um, uh, focus on a kind of wide range of dimensions of child development, such as health, uh, also immunization outcomes and education outcomes. And we aim to understand, uh, to unravel in a way, the causal impact of maternal employment. Um, and also to consider, um, at the end of the, the presentation this will be more clear, what are the channels? So oh, as a as uh, we will see in a minute, of course, income uh, is uh, one of the main channels that uh, connects maternal employment and child development, but there are a number of other pathways that uh, um, should be considered, and uh, in particular, uh, we uh, focus on decision-making power, so bargaining power, and uh, social interactions, and, uh, and the better networks created by mother's work. Um, so what uh, the theory says about this relationship? As I was saying, uh, on um, so the in general, the relationship between maternal employment and child development is, uh, the effect is not unambiguous in the sense that on the one hand, uh, maternal employment bring, means more money, more income, which is, uh, you know, bringing, uh, brought in by, by the employment, so more investment in child health and education. But at the same time, maternal employment comes at a cost of less time spent with children, more stress, and this, uh, of course, can uh, be uh, harmful for child development. However, uh, as I was saying, there are other channels that uh, uh, we could consider. So, for example, so add or other say potential benefits. Uh, one of these is, uh, for example, more equitable gender norms. So this is especially the case uh, for, for daughters. So mothers who work know better, say, the value of uh, being educated and and, uh, and you know uh, having a, a job. So they might invest more in their daughters, uh, and so bring. The uh, transmit these this, uh, more equitable gender norms to the next generations. We might expect also greater paternal involvement uh, simply because of the uh, new division of, uh, of task within the household. And um, last, uh, there are also, there might be also important uh, informational benefits that comes from the, from the exposure to a larger network. Um, so simply mothers who work uh, connect themselves with a larger network of other women or other mothers and can acquire more information about child, uh, child uh, care uh, through this exposure to a larger network. Um, so what uh, does the literature says, the empirical literature says about this relationship? Well, uh, in a parallel work that I've been doing with uh, one of the co-authors of this paper, uh, Lisa Perova, and then with uh, Sarah Reynolds, we uh, are doing a systematic review of all the literature over the last 20 years, which examined this relationship, uh, looking at both developed and developing countries. Uh, we came up with, uh, so only, we selected only the papers we, uh, that basically uh, try to unravel the causal impact, so papers using a high-V approach or um, fixed effects or a mix of fixed effects and the V. Uh, and we came uh, with only 25 papers, 24 uh, developed countries and five for developing countries. So there is, a, uh, of course, a bias, uh, um, which is mostly data driven in the literature. And what we see, if we look at, uh, so these are all the sub-studies. So uh, in each paper, of course, you can find more dimensions that are so in total we have uh, 39 sub-studies, and what we see is that uh, uh, in general, overall, um, the fact uh, there is very mixed evidence. Uh, in most of the cases, uh, when uh, no effect is found, so null effect, we see some positive, uh, so beneficial effects for um, health, obesity, and schooling and stunting, uh, but um, null or negative uh, for behavioral and cognitive outcomes. Even more interestingly is when we look uh, at uh, high-income countries versus low- and middle-income countries, and there uh, it's um, more uh, uh, 
easy to see that uh, actually the, um, the papers who found a positive effect uh, mostly uh, are focused in a developing country context. And this already points uh, or suggests that uh, um, probably in the low and middle income countries, the income effect might be stronger than uh, you know, what we see in developed countries. Um, so, this paper basically contributes to this very narrow literature that we have, empirical literature that we have for developing countries, uh, and uh, it expands evidence on the uh, East and Asian uh, Pacific region. As I said, we analyze a wide range of development outcomes, uh, controlling or checking also for the multiple hypothesis testings, and we apply a strong identification strategy, which basically um, is an IV approach. And uh, we have a rich uh, data set and control for household income to also see the effect, uh, a net of the income effect. Um, so the data that we use is a longitudinal survey data from Indonesia, it's the IFLS. Uh, we have four waves, 97, 2000, 2007, and 2014. We merge this data with other data, which is uh, the um, SACERNAS, uh, the National Labor Force Survey, where we take information from, uh, for, that we will use for our instrument, information on the um, employment by sector. And uh, we also use data on import tariff, which again is uh, something that we will use for uh, our instrument, which I will explain in a minute. We come up with a big sample size, more than 44,000 observation. And um, we have, uh, our analysis is carried on, our, on this sample, which includes households with absent fathers. So basically what we have, uh, here I have just some summary statistics, we have the, pool, the main analysis based on the pool sample, where we control uh, for father characteristics and uh, we will control for a dummy indicating whether the father is present, interacted by father characteristics. We have a, a big set of controls, including also culture that uh, we capture by the uh, matrilocal ethnicity. We, we uh, heard about this uh, this morning at the plenary and um, uh, controlling also for the presence of uh, grandparents in the household, etc. We, um, as I said, we have, uh, so the, the main uh, um, variable for uh, mother employment is a binary indicator uh, where employment is, uh, indicates private wage work, work for uh, public sector, government institution, self-employed uh, employment, unpaid family work and casual work. And uh, the child development outcomes are, as I said, a wide range of outcomes, including immunization that we measure only for children aged uh, zero to five, uh, and health outcomes such as height for age, stunting, wasting, uh, underweight, the level of hemoglobin, uh, lung capacity, and we use this information separately, but also jointly, uh, because we construct a, a Zeta score index, a KKL index uh, of um, half. And uh, after schooling, we have the years of schooling, whether the child is enrolled, uh, and an indicator that is called age and schooling that basically measures whether the child is on track at school. And also, uh, we use this separately, but also we compute uh, a composite measure uh, with this Zeta score index. Um, so, about the relationship uh, and the uh, difficulties in, in uh, um, uh, measuring the fact, as I said, this is, a, uh, there is very much, a, it's a, an endogenous type of relationship, and why is it endogenous? Well, because uh, um, maternal labor market decisions uh, can be determined jointly with the child uh, outcomes. Um, in a nutshell, uh, mothers whose child is sick may decide to withdraw from the labor market, for example, to stay more with the child, or on the contrary, they actually can decide to work more or to enter the labor market to, en to earn more income, which again, um, it's, uh, might be beneficial for the child. Also, we might have another problem uh, that is um, in the error term, because, uh, for example, if we assume that the children of working mothers kind of inherit uh, some um, good, uh, so good levels of innate ability, more intelligence, more the, um, uh, you know, um, willingness to uh, to work, etc., motivation, and and productivity. Then we will end up with a kind of um, biased sample. So we. Um, 
address this issue by adopting an IV approach where we consider as an instrument the exogenous reduction in tariff which happened in Indonesia following uh, the um, uh, measures recommended by WTO. Uh, and in particular we consider the, um, basically the, the change in tariff weighted by the uh, f um, sectoral uh, intensity, uh, female um, intensity in, in each uh, industries. And we control for household income. So, um, as I said, uh, this is basically our, our uh, exogenous variation of the import uh, tariff reduction to, uh, started in 1990, late 1994. Uh, we see over time uh, a big reduction, and we see that uh, this uh, uh, also big uh, differences in the um, in the fact in the intensity female intensity across uh, different industries, and we we basically use these two type of information uh, to um, to compute to construct our our um, um, instrument. So the first uh, uh, stage is basically um, maternal employment against. Uh, um, the, um, the uh, change in tariff, where I said, as I said before, this change in tariff is nothing but the difference between uh, 1995 and the time at which mother employment is observed, weighted by um, the ratio of uh, uh, female employment uh, in each sector over uh, total uh, employment. So, a uh, quick look at the result. We see, interestingly, that uh, um, maternal employment uh, has a positive and significant effect on uh, health outcomes. And uh, another thing uh, which is interesting to note is that uh, controlling for income doesn't change the coefficient that much. And uh, this already points to um, uh, kind of uh, uh, no big importance in the income channel in the Indonesian context. Uh, same if we look at schooling outcomes, so we see a big, big effect, which is basically something like a um, 1.4 standard deviation higher. So the, the, the Zeta scores of, uh, of, um, of children of working mothers are 1.4 standard deviation higher compared to children of non-working mothers. Um, when uh, we look uh, at, different, uh, at the different indicators, we see that this effect is mostly, uh, mostly comes from height for age, uh, hemoglobin, and stunting and all the indicators for schooling are significant and very large. Uh, by age we see that the fact is stronger uh, for health among the youngest children and for schooling is stronger among the oldest children. No differences in, in, by gender, so they are both significant but the uh, coefficient is a bit larger for, uh, among girls. And also, interestingly, all the effect that we observe comes basically from rural areas, so no effect on, on the uh, urban areas. Um, so the uh, last um, thing that we want to understand is uh, after we, we observe that uh, basically uh, controlling for income doesn't change that much our coefficient, so what, are, uh, what can be the other channels that uh, brings this positive effect? And we focus on three mediating factors, uh, bargaining power, mother's participation to networks, we used uh, different proxies for that, and this is particularly important in the context of Indonesia, which has this uh, long-standing uh, culture of mutual aid, uh, uh, mutual aid, which has been uh, shown in the literature to be important, for example, for the uh, um, uh, and productivity in, in, uh, in small and, and small, um, uh, enterprise, in small and medium enterprises. And, uh, and then we consider also mother health-related behavior. So, how do we uh, take this into account? Because, of course, these mediating variables are also themselves um, endogenous. And uh, so we, in order to kind of uh, uh, address this issue, uh, we uh, adopt a strategy which was uh, recently um, uh, brought by a paper by Deepel et al. in Economic Journal. Well, that basically suggests that when you have a mediating variable which is itself endogenous, uh, what uh, you need to do is kind of two sets of two-stage least square regression. The first set is basically the effect of maternal employment on the mediating variable, okay, where the maternal employment is instrumented by the tariff. The second set of regression is uh, the first uh, part, the effect of the um, 
uh, instrument on the mediating variables controlling for maternal employment. And, um, and then we have the, uh, the second stage where we have the child outcomes, uh, where the mediator is, uh, of course, instrumented by the tariff. So the, um, the, to the direct effect of maternal employment is nothing but the coefficient on maternal employment in this last stage, and the indirect effect, so the effect of maternal employment on child development through bargaining power, for instance, is nothing but, of course, the product uh, of uh, these two coefficients. So, um, going to the results, we see that for this uh, first set of regression, so that basically uh, establish whether this mediating variable matters, we see that uh, in all these cases uh, these have a strong and, and positive uh, significant effect on maternal employment. And when we look at uh, our main uh, regression of interest, so uh, how much of uh, the total effect of maternal employment is conveyed through these mediating variables, we see that it's actually mostly captured by bargaining power. And, uh, and by mother's participation, mother's uh, exposure to larger networks. So where this is proxied by participation in voluntary labor, in village improvement projects, and uh, in uh, savings and rotation, uh, and credit rotation groups. Um, and uh, we, uh, for our last set of mediators, which is of course, uh, very um, uh, much related to the previous one, uh, we see that uh, also, uh, although to a smaller extent, uh, this um, mother self behavior uh, it's uh, um, an important mediating channel. So to sum up, uh, as I said, this is a contribution to this very narrow empirical literature in developing country context about this relationship. We have interesting findings uh, that basically uh, posit the existence of a positive relationship and significant relationship between maternal employment and child development outcomes. We observe that uh, contemporaneous household income doesn't play too much of a role, but it's basically what participation to the labor market brings, so exposure to networks uh, and more, more uh, bargaining power that matters more as a mediating, uh, as a mediating channel. Um, so I think I used all my time, so we'll close it here and they take some questions.